we experience something, and this is called the overflowing. And, and Pastor Robin uh, had, had texted me this week, and, and, and she was not feeling well. And she texted me, and she said, Robbie, do you have a message that God's given you? And I said, yes, I do. And she said, Robbie, she said, I felt confident that God had given you something. And this morning, I'm telling you, it's almost immediately after that service, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that we watched, God began to speak to my heart. God began to give me a word for this congregation. And I didn't go to the pastor and say, it's time for me to speak. I didn't say I have a sermon. But God puts things in order for a reason. God puts people in a church in perfect places for a reason. God puts people in ministry positions for a reason. And his purpose is perfect. Last Sunday, we experienced the Holy Ghost that we haven't experienced in a while, Brother Marvin. We begin to see testimony after testimony begin to walk up. The pastor didn't have to deliver a sermon because the Holy Spirit began to speak and deliver a sermon right here among us. But we experienced the overflowing. You see, I was sitting behind the drums, and Gail, I apologize, and Rob and I apologize. You know I never stick to my, my, my script. Follow me on PowerPoint and follow me on camera. It's going to be hard. But I experienced when I sat back on the drums, I watched this congregation as you stood up and you began to lift your hands, crying out to God, saying, we want you, Holy Spirit. We want you, God. I need a healing, and I know the master's here. I watched as you experienced it. We had a camp meeting. We had revival, and we saw miracle after miracle after miracle. But I'm here to tell you, the God of last Sunday is still the same God of this Sunday. God's not on hot and ready. He's ready 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So why aren't we getting our cup filled? Why aren't we experiencing overflowing Holy Spirit? In John chapter 10, it says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it full. I could be up here this morning and I could preach to you about what's going on in Paris. I could preach to you about how our country's broken up. But here's what I'm telling you. The devil's out to kill and destroy. But God's here that he may fulfill your life. I'm here to tell you. Stop worrying about yesterday. Let's worry about now. God is ever present. He's on time. He is here. Psalms 23 says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. There is nothing that Satan can do to me that God will not replenish with his anointing, refreshing oil, his refreshing water, his new wine. Did you hear me this morning? There is nothing that Satan can do to tear my family apart that God can't heal. There's no disease that God can't heal. My finances, God can heal. When I need a job, he's on time. He's on the main line, and I tell him what I want because my cup overflows. Are you ready for a cup overflowing this morning? Some of you didn't get exactly what you needed yesterday. You didn't get it the day before. You didn't get it last Sunday. That's what I saw from the drums. I saw people accepting what God was pouring out. I saw that that God was filling the vessels. So we're going to pretend this beautiful little Dollar Tree pot is God's anointing. And some of you... You sat there last Sunday and you were feeling joyful and nobody left. You could feel the unity and the peace that God was moving, the breath of fresh air. And, 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 but here's what I felt. I felt there were people that sat back because they were too afraid to dip into the anointing. There were people that I didn't understand what God was doing. So I didn't know, understand if I should receive the Holy Spirit or not, Brother Callahan. I I have an addiction, but I'm afraid because I don't know if I can actually go through with giving up this addiction. 
I've been keeping this oppression or, or depression or, or these demons, the, these things that haunt me. I've been keeping my past right here in front of me the whole time. And, and, and I feel God. I feel the joy. I feel something in my spirit. But I'm not ready to get out in the aisle yet. I'm not ready to, to fill the water yet. I'm here to tell you God's here today. And I'm telling you he stirred up my soul all week because I'm expecting something great. Not by my hand and not by my might, but by the spirit of the Lord. And, and, and some of us, this is the way we felt. Here's this anointing. And we feel half full or even a quarter bit. Just a little bit. It's time to turn your cup right side up. Because if it's down, he can't pour anything in. You got to have your cup turned upside right. You see, if you look at a, at a, at a waitress or a waiter, something uh, that, that, that they're born to do, and to, they, they love to minister, they love to serve. And, and some of these waiters and waitresses are so good that if your coffee cup's sitting there on the table and you turn it right side up, they immediately begin to pour you that fresh, hot coffee. I love coffee. I've only had one cup today. But God gave me a little bit more caffeine. And see, that waiter or that waitress, they come and they pour it, and, and, and we're like, oh, man, that was good. And, and sometimes we look at God like it's a Krispy Kreme. I love Krispy Kreme. Some of you gave me one for a gift card for pastor appreciation. I love you and my son loves you. But we see that hot and ready sign, and it gets us all, well, some of you don't get all of you, but it gets me excited. I see that red light come on, and I feel like it's little angel halos from heaven. Coming off the conveyor belt. And I'm not going to lie, the first day they were open, I ate a dozen and then I ate another half. I didn't feel bad. I waited a whole year for a Krispy Kreme to be in Roanoke. My cup was on. I said, fill it up with the donuts. I'll never forget the woman, her name was Shaniqua. I, that was her name. Her name was Shaniqua. She was right there. And she pulled up. She said, what can I do for you, honey? I said, I need a dozen and a half, baby. Come on. <laughs> I told my wife I called her baby. I said, I need my baby. And she knew. And I ate every bit of them donuts, and I enjoyed, and then I didn't feel bad afterwards. Because you know what? I prayed that God would turn them into carrots and green beans when they went down. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to gain any weight. I'm good. I'm ready for that donut. Just fill me up, Lord. And it was great. It was great. I enjoyed it. But sometimes that's how we see God. We think when the Holy Spirit's moving, the red light's on. And it says, now it's ready. Now it's time. I'm here to tell you, God is open 24 hours a day. The heaven light is on 24 hours a day. And when God starts to stir you up in the middle of the night at 1 o'clock in the morning, it's not for a donut and it's not for coffee. But God is brushing the angel, angel wings of heaven. Yeah. In your room, ushering in his presence into your room. When you can't sleep at night, you need to start meditating on God. God, it's time to turn the cup up. It is time for you to pour it in. I'm ready for a fresh anointing. Do you feel what I'm saying this morning? We can't say, God, you're only here on Sundays. Because if he was only open two hours a day for business on only on Sundays, we wouldn't be able to get into the church. You have people lined up saying, I want to taste what other people are tasting. I want to feel what everybody else is feeling. But God is here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I believe Harvest Ministries is spirit and out anointing, an anointing that's outpouring, ever flowing. Because if you look at it, September we had prayer month. Spontaneous, not planned, not put on the calendar. It said, let's pray. Then we start experiencing these prayer times. These prayer groups, we start experiencing healings. We have new ministries coming into this church every day. Some of you don't know, we have counseling that goes on with Brother John. He's a man of God that says, I want to be used. We got people in this church that say, I just want to be a helper. So they come and they help. We got people right now that say, what needs to be done on a Sunday morning? We got people that are willing to do it. We just had a men's breakfast and praise God, we have five young men there out of 18 men. There's reasons the Holy Spirit is working. We have an amazing choir now that is singing their hearts out for God. We have ministries. We had to build a new nursery because too many of you are getting blessed with a baby. 
I don't get mad at God for it. I thank God for it. Bring in the children. Build another nursery. But you got to turn your cup right side up. Harvest Ministries, I believe the cups are up in this sanctuary this morning. I believe the cups are up this morning. And Brother Glenn, I'm still claiming your healing. As he walked round and round, he got up here and he was walking. You tried to stop him. Let me testify to you a minute. He said, all right, okay. And then he kept going. He got up here up on the steps. My dad looked at him to give him help. He said, no, brother, I got it. Dad offered again. Brother, I got it. It wasn't a negative statement. It was a positive statement of testimony that says, I'm tired of everyone else picking me up. My God's done picked me up. So my cup's turned up. It's time that I experience a little bit more of the anointing to where God's filling my cup, Brother Glenn. But he wasn't the only one healed. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I know some of you are like, this guy's crazy. He's all over the place. It's okay to receive his fullness. But it was written, eye has not seen, nor ear has heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. That we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things which also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but what the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. You see, we can have this man-made decision up this morning. We can have man wisdom or woman wisdom, but what the Holy Spirit teaches, only the Holy Spirit can give. When the Holy Spirit pours out, it's not what I pour into that cup. It's not what the pastor pours out onto you. It's not us putting our fingers on your forehead. The Holy Spirit teaches wisdom that man cannot. That's what makes you a sinner saved by grace. You see, you don't realize the, how the worship service was orchestrated last Sunday. It was, given, uh, uh, it was given to Dr. Ron two weeks prior to that service. I didn't know I was preaching this Sunday until it happened and God said and put everything in place. But did you notice the worship service was on the Holy Spirit? I didn't tell my father what I was speaking on. The Holy Spirit orchestrated what was going to happen today. Don't tell me my God can't let the Holy Spirit teach. Don't tell me my God doesn't reveal to the Holy Spirit what we need to hear. Because some of you are so blind right now that you don't experience it. It's okay. You don't understand. But I'm telling you, if you close your eyes and allow that Holy Spirit to breathe and teach and speak a word to you this morning, you will fill your cup overflowing like you never have. And just little by little, God will keep pouring it on in. Pouring it on in. Oh, God, be with us this morning. If your cup's ready to be filled, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to fill us. We need the discernment of the Holy Ghost to prompt and speak to our hearts. It is our human nature to wonder when and what will fill the cup that God has placed in our lives with power and wisdom. But I'm telling you, He's an on-time God. He will fill your cup with the power, the wisdom, and the discernment that only God and the Holy Spirit can give. There is nothing this world has to offer that's better tasting than the new wine that God has. That the new anointing that God has, that the Holy Spirit He can give. This morning, you may say, how does my cup get filled when I turn it right side up? It's through the leadership of God. It's through the leadership of the Holy Spirit, the leadership that He can only give you. This morning, you need to understand when the Scripture tells you, He leadeth me, He maketh me, He restoreth my soul in time of trouble. That is the Holy Spirit telling you that it's going to be all right. 
When you rest upon him in his awesome presence of protection, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and knowing that the Lord will bring you through it, can you press forward and turn your cup up for the perfect will of God? When he says in his scripture, he prepares a table before me, he anoints my head with oil, he is talking about everyone that is here this morning. The table is here. But some of you are feeling that your cup is cracked. I've got too many holes in my cup. How could God fill me with his anointing, with his living water? How could God heal something that's broken? Romans chapter 9, verse 19. You will say to them, to me then, why does he still find fault? For who has resisted his will? But indeed, O man, who are you to reply against God? Will the thing formed say to him who formed it, why have you made it like this? Does not the potter have the power over the clay? from the same lump to make one vessel for honor and another for dishonor. You may be cracked for the disobedience. You may be cracked for the selfishness. You may be cracked for your desires. You may be cracked this morning from your, from your own personal way, but I'm here to tell you the potter's in the house. And what he makes this morning, he has formed you and made you perfect. There is no crack in your life that God can't fix. There is no hole in your heart that God cannot mend. There is nothing broken about you as a vessel that God cannot make for his honor and his glory. You can sit there and look in the mirror. You can say, I'm tired. I'm disgusted of what I see. But I'm here to tell you, God makes everyone perfect by his Holy Spirit. You can come from an ugly past, you can come from an ugly home, you can come from an ugly job, but I'm here to tell you, my God makes you perfect. The Holy Spirit speaks when we need to hear it. This past Wednesday, some of you think that youth group is for just young people to go have fun sometimes, and we do have fun. And in this, this past series, we have worked on a, a series called Going Out With God, exploring God outside the four walls of the church. And, and we had what was called Wendy's Judgment. Now, don't judge me because I love a, bu- a Baconator. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, we were at Wendy's, and we were talking about how people can look at people on the outside, how they can judge every sinner on the outside. They can pick apart a person on the outside of these doors, but when you come to church, it's like, oh, brothers and sisters, come to the door. Come on. We love everybody. But when we go to Wendy's, we have judgment. And we had a woman that was judging us. Woo! She gave us the dirtiest looks because we moved a table. And she was like, they ain't supposed to do that. (laughs) But we didn't say nothing to her. She kept talking, kept talking. I was... You know, God, we're going to use the sermon here. And so we got through our sermon, our message, and and I started talking to them, and the young people, they were talking. And at the end, I said, okay, it's time for us to go get back in the van. This man, about my height, came over. He was dirty as could be. Worked all day. He was a cement guy. He came over to me with tears in his eyes and his cup just shaking. And he said, I needed to hear every word you taught that youth group tonight. Everything you said, I needed to hear that tonight. He said, I have ran from God. I used to be a police officer, a fireman. I couldn't keep it together because my my brother, I found him dead at home. I couldn't keep it together. His cup was broken, you see. And that cup that was broken, it was dirty and tarnished. And he even said, he said, People don't give me a look because I'm so dirty where I work. And he said, I wasn't even going to stop here to eat tonight because I didn't even want Wendy's. My first question was, why wouldn't you want Wendy's? (laughs) But I didn't. I used a sermon. And he said, I wasn't even going to stop. He said, I've got an hour and a half to get back home tonight. And you got to think, this is 730. He's been up all day. He said, but I just had to stop. And I said, you know why? Because God had it planned from the very beginning of this day 
that our paths would cross. We walked outside and I said, his name was Todd. I said, can we pray for you? He said, please. We prayed and he just began to tear up. You see, that's when the Holy Spirit speaks. It's not just in the four walls of this church, but my God is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and he speaks to our vessels, whether they're dirty, tarnished, or broken, and he begins to mend. You see, I could look at my life, and I could say, yeah, I've had a good life, but there's holes, there's things that are cracked, there's things that are broken, but when God is the potter and I'm the clay, mold me, shape me, use me, Lord. Some of you this morning, you may be sitting here feeling like you're, you're just a pot that's been sitting on a shelf and you're tarnished. It's time to knock the dust off, turn the cup right side up, and know that my God is ready to pour his anointing because the cracks are filled for you this morning. Anoint my cup. We can talk about turning this cup right side up. And having this saying, God, fill me, mend the holes, mend everything, break me, remold me, reshape me. I want to be filled. But our cups are not powerful. They're useless inside of us. We are a useless vessel sometimes if we don't have the Holy Spirit in control. I can walk around and say I'm saved, but if I'm not allowing the Holy Spirit to control the decisions of my life, to use discernment, I'm going to find myself in wrong places at the wrong time. At my lowest points of, of, of when I feel depressed or I feel like I'm in an endless job, I'm not going to have anything without this cup being anointed. I can have the living water, but I need this anointed oil this morning. This is what Jesus says. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He did anoint me. To proclaim good news to the poor. Sent me to heal the broken of heart. To proclaim captives deliverance. And to blind receiving of sight. To send away the bruised with deliverance. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. We are in the day when God is pouring out his anointing in our cups. And he has anointed every vessel in this sanctuary to heal the brokenhearted. To heal those who are bruised. Jesus is among us to deliver this morning those who are oppressed. It is my desire to see the youth and children of this church to have an overflowing cup. To see the children and men and women's ministry to have an overflowing cup. To see our nursery have an anointing so heavy that the nursery workers will feel the presence of God in that nursery room and it will begin to pour out. It is my desire as a youth pastor to see our worship go to the next level. To see an outpouring of his Holy Ghost Spirit among the worship team to the choir. It is my desire to see the media and our pastor have an abundance of an anointing that it spills out over the sanctuary. It is my desire to see everyone and my loved ones saved, my neighbors saved, my coworkers saved, these community and the people in the community saved and soaked with the overflowing anointing of God. It is my desire to see deliverance right here around the church of Harvest Ministries. That when people walk through our doors, the anointing that is filling in our cups will begin to deliver them as soon as they walk in. You say it can't happen? I say my Holy Spirit has told me that when He's here, He's here to work. He's here to deliver. He's here to teach. He's here to take us out of the ambushes of this world and mend us back together. But see, it starts with the cup being up. You are a cup this morning. And if you're hungry and thirsty, my God has an anointing that he will give you and fill that vessel. You are not cracked. You are not broken beyond repair. The Holy Spirit is here to fulfill life. The healer and provider, the comforter and peace speaker is here 
to mend everybody's heart, no matter what you're going through. But you want to talk about how God works? See, some of you think there's coincidences in life. That sometimes when we're, we're experiencing God, it's, it's just a coincidence this thing happened or this thing happened. God knew who was going to be here this morning and who's on the verge of a breakthrough. God knows the person in this seat right now that you're holding back tears because you're afraid of what the Holy Spirit's going to reveal to you. There's some of you right now that in your heart right now, that lump has dropped in the middle of your stomach right now because you feel the power of God moving in this sanctuary and you just want everything that doesn't belong in that cup to be ripped out so the potter can make you feel fresh and whole again. Some of you say, I haven't had a testimony of healing. And I'm doubting right now if God can heal whatever's going on in my life. I'm here to tell you, God is here to heal. My wife looked at me the other day. and She often asked me questions about sermons and, and different things. She asked me about how this sermon came about. And I started describing to her what God started pouring out in me. And he got to the spillage part. The overflow. It feels good when they give you an extra bunch of fries with your Happy Meal or your combo. When I go to Chick-fil-A and I count the nuggets, if I get an extra, I'm, ooh, I'm excited. When we get something a little extra for a gift that we didn't expect, it means a whole lot. And I kept thinking about this overflowing spillage, this, this thing coming over our cup. And this morning, I, I, I bought a jug of milk, like I always do for our coffee shop. And you want to talk about God working. He's got a sense of humor sometimes. I, I bring this milk, I get it, I always check the date, make sure the lid's on. I put it up, they always ask you, do you want a bag? And I say, no. The guy looks at it and says, wait a minute. He says, you're leaking. It's spilling. I'm like, okay. Goes and gets me a new one. It's like, at that time, it's like, man, it's like, God, you're on time. We're on point. We need that milk and that honey from heaven this morning. We need manna. And our church is hungry. They're hungry for healing and peace. But God didn't stop. The young man comes running back. He says, here, I got you one. I said, okay, thank you. I take the jug of milk, put it in my truck. Get here, open the door, it's spilling out of my car. I didn't get upset. I said, God, we're getting some milk and honey this morning. The spillage is overflowing. And see, I know some of you say it's a coincidence. I say, no. My God's on time. Because some of you, you got your cup full, and that's where you felt like that's all I need. This is all I need every Sunday morning. As long as my cup's full, that's all I need. And some of you say, when the Holy Spirit's here, I don't feel like it's my time. I don't feel like I should get a blessing every Sunday. Well, if my God says he's willing to give us blessings of abundance, then why wouldn't I want to come to church and say, God, what can you do for a brother this morning? What do I need fixed? What am I missing? What do you need to discern to me this morning? Because there's people all around us that need God. Co-workers, family. So how do we reach our lost loved ones? How do we reach our neighbor right beside us right now? How do we know that when people walk through these doors, that healing and the anointing of God is here? It's with the spillage of how God just begins to overflow. Overflow, overflow, overflow. Some of you get it, some of you don't. All I know is that's the word God gave me. All I know is that there's people in this church that I used to be that one that sat there and said, God, I can only go up one, once a month to make sure I get a blessing and then I'm good. But how do we reach our neighbors? 
How do you minister among the congregation right here and now if your cup's not running over with the anointing of God? You can have the living water, but you have to have the anointing. How do we heal those who have broken wounds? I had a young man come up to me at a recent revival. And he came to me and he said, I have a young person that's on my heart. He's gone this way, and I just want to get him. And I want to tell him this is what you should do because he's going down the wrong way. He's not running to God. He's running away from God. What do I do? I said, brother, you need the Holy Spirit. He says, that's what everybody tells me. And I said, then why aren't you listening? You can have scripture and you can have word, but I feel this in my heart this morning. If you don't have the Holy Spirit in control and the anointing of God spilling out over top of you this morning, how do you get past step one? You say, I've been praying for God to do this, this, and this. You can't get steps one, two, and three without the first anointing of God. You can't have a marriage that's not anointed with God. Last and be okay. It's hard. God's a sinner. Yes, he's a sinner. But I need his holy anointing in my family over my marriage. How do I get my children back in church? Let the anointing of God spill out over you. And he will give you the discernment and the word you need for that young person. You say, I can't get out of the grasp of my job. Let the Holy Ghost anointing overflow you and spill out on your coworkers. The Holy Spirit is here. But he needs to breathe on somebody this morning. Will you stand this morning? I sensed the Holy Spirit from the beginning of the service this morning. Here's what I'm going to ask you this morning. Men and women of God, young people. Are you ready for your cup to be filled this morning to the top? You may have experienced something last Sunday, but you said, you know, my cup's still a little empty. God's here to fill the cups. If you're broken, hurt this morning, the scripture told us God's here. He has anointed you. If you want to sit at his table right now, all you have to do is come. But you say, I was here last Sunday and I got everything I needed. It doesn't stop. Because God's ready for your cup to be overflowing and spill out a little bit. And we need some more people in this church that have a little bit more of that anointing of God that spills out. And Pastor, come. Brother Ken, come. Brother Barnard, come. You see, our shepherd gives us the word. You guys come here. Get close. Our shepherd gets the word. He's our shepherd. But here's what I believe in the church. We have to have an anointing that starts with the men beside him. That when the anointing fills us up and spills out, we can spill out on one another right here with that anointing. That anointing not only comes over him, but he has an anointing that comes out of this vessel and pours out on us. So if my cup's a little dry, you can have a little science experiment if you want, but you put a cup beside another, it's gonna flow right over to this one beside it. It's gonna flow over to the one beside it. It's gonna flow over to the one beside it. We need an anointing this morning among our people that overflows in this sanctuary, starting with you. You say, I have nothing to give. I don't have a gift. I'm telling you, you have a gift because you are saved by grace. And now it's time for the anointing that's in you to overflow beside you. To where it almost begins to be squishy in here. And when we walk, you hear the anointing of God. You feel the anointing of God. It's like you're walking in a flood 
of the Holy Spirit as it just breathes in this sanctuary this morning. You say, I don't know what you're talking about, Rev. Rob. I'm saying if you close your eyes right now and begin to listen to the Holy Spirit, you'll feel the breath of God breathing on you right now. 